Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. Yeah! We are, yeah. We are, today we are talking about our emotional attachment to food. Mm-hmm. Now, who says we can't make anything into a geek topic? We're talking about food. We've done mustaches. We've done food. We need to figure out what the trifecta is of, is that really geek? We'll get there. We'll get there. You can geek mm-hmm. out over anything. Exactly. Yeah. Anything that you are passionate about. And let's be honest, judging from our listener feedback, holy crap, people are passionate about food. Yep. I am Dub. I am here with Ellie or Pixie. I'm here with Tyler and I'm here with Christina. How y'all doing today? Excellent. I am awake and craving really good food. (laughs) Well, that's perfect. Today's show is brought to you by diets. I'm sure we'll all have to go on (laughs) one after this episode ends. Uh... Yeah. (laughs) Okay, yes. while we got you here, hopefully we haven't bored you yet. If you can go down and click that subscribe button, um, hit the little thumbs up thing, we would appreciate it. It means the world to us. And on with the show. <laughs> okay, so let, let, let's just go right out of the gate. Why do we have an attachment or an emotional attachment to certain foods? Mm-hmm. I want to start with Christina on this one. Why do you emotionally, on an emotion, not a hunger level, emotionally? Right. I think for me, it's definitely based out of memory. Mm-hmm. Like, like for me, my comfort foods are things that are nostalgic almost. Um, there's something positive that I attach to that. Um, and believe it or not, my absolute number one is a uh, very geek too, because of the reason behind it. So I got gotcha. you. Fair enough. Tyler, what about you? Why do you think so? Um, well, dub. Yes. There's a lot of reasons we, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons we eat in general. Uh, you know, food has many different values, whether it be just basic survival, you know, oh, it tastes good. It's sweet. Okay, cool. Energy, you know, it's, uh, you know, health reasons. If you're trying to get fit, you're going to clean it up a bit. You're going to eat certain items that you know are going to promote good health. And then you have emotional connections and cultural connections. And having, that's probably one of the strongest connections to food is you were having a good time somewhere. Yeah. You, you ate an amazing meal that fired up the reward center, the old brain, and it just, it created a core memory, you know? Yeah, and I've, we always go back to that, that thing that's going to fire up that reward yeah. center of the brain and, you know, bring you back to that time where you just had such a fun day or something. You know? I feel like your taste buds are in a very close place in your brain to, the music center. Right. Because it is that same kind of emotional mm-hmm. gink. What about you, Pixie? I have to kind of agree. I think a lot of it is is the experience itself that you're going through when you are eating the food. Like when I went to Thailand a long time ago, you were oh, there. Best Thai food in the world in Thailand. When you're, it. it's, it's amazing. Like, for example, we walked down the street and you see vendors just give out mango sticky rice. 100 baht, 100 baht, and you're like, 100 baht for Meg? Give me the whole bowl. Like, it's so good. That's like 35 and cents, it's guys. So so fresh. It's so <laughs> yeah, I know. It translates to like nothing because out there, it's so easy to. I, I didn't even spend a thousand dollars on my week there, but it was so delicious and so good. And everything is just so amazing when it's so fresh. And when I come back here and have Thai food, it's like, it's, it's great. It's, it reminds me of that. It's not the exact same. But it, it reminds me so much of it that I keep wanting to go back for more Thai food. And it works for other foods, too. Like, it's a memory thing. It's, it's something that makes us, it's an experience we want to relive. Now, ironically, I'm a little bit different than you on that because, like, I had such a wonderful time when I went to Thailand in the military. And it, now, anytime I eat in Thai food here, it doesn't compare. It's not even in the same ballpark. Yeah. And therefore, it's disappointing to me all the time. And I can't touch Thai food anywhere. You know? <laughs> and I have a few restaurants, and I'll talk about some of that on my list, that, yes, other places make the same food, but it's right. not that. And, yes, maybe it is the memories, but it's not that perfect moment in your mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just that, you know, that, you know almost, almost like a drug euphoria you can get with some of these yeah. food Absolutely. things. So here's my question to you now, going on to the dark side of this. Uh, We're Americans. We eat too much. 
-hmm. how do we separate this attachment we have, this emotional attachment we have with being able to use it as just a reward instead of overindulging because we always need, because we always got to feel happy. Um, how do we avoid that? I think that's kind of the important question. And Tyler is our resident health nut. I'm going to give this to you first. It depends on where you place your value. I mean, if you don't value your, you know, I'm not saying this is in, as a knock to anybody or anything like that, but if you don't place value on your health or in all you're considered, all you're concerned about is the hedonistic value of food, you know, ooh, yummy, tastes good, and that's it then that's all you're going to keep chasing. And the more you chase that, the more the reward center gets fired up. You're going to overeat, you know, yeah. you're going to eat too much. And that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. And unfortunately, corporations spend billions of dollars making sure you do exactly that because every aspect of food out there nowadays, it's all about that hedonistic value of the yeah. food. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you place value, say, listen, I know what this is going to do to my body from a health standpoint. And I want to be around and have a higher quality of life as I get older and stuff like that. When that really becomes important, you'll start making different decisions. You'll start mm -hmm. eating differently. Um, but finding that balance, that's, that's the fun part because it's not easy. Yeah. But, I, and I, I will say this, I mean, as much as we are in a, it's not my fault society, which I usually come down on. It is true that, you know, you get used to that reward system and it is, painful to not give yourself that reward mm -hmm. you know and that's yeah. you know I say and this goes back to the very addictive nature of some of these foods we we're talking about which we're all going to love and drool over and probably go eat some but it is something about that that's hard mm -hmm. you know it's, it's and even from a uh, an evolutionary standpoint when when the cavemen hunter gatherers whatever were running around they found something super sweet and decadent it usually meant a quick source of energy yeah so you know, they they would, you know, keep an eye out for stuff like that. If something was bitter, it was probably not good for you, you know. And the the food Explain we have today, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll yeah, get on that. That'll be another podcast. <laughs> that is um, that is coming, guys. Yep. But you know, the the corporations and stuff they've hijacked that that part yeah. of your brain, you know, and that's why it's just so hard to stay away from. Christina, what about you? So mine's a little bit different because. I'm I'm a little I'm a little bit older. Back in my day, um, I was raised that you don't get up from the you know you don't get up from the table until your plate is cleared. Mm -hmm. And I'm the second oldest of like eleven, so we grew up on a lot of casseroles, which taste amazing, but they're not really healthy. <laughs> it's got um, all the, uh, the, the you know so box. I struggled for years about being feeling very guilty about leaving stuff on my plate, especially if I went somewhere and somebody else dishes it up. Um, I found that very happy medium because I married Deshaun, who has the most amazing tap metabolism on the planet. I eat my tiny little portion and he eats everything else and his. Um, but for me, yeah, it was more of that. I was raised that way. Like you don't leave stuff on your plate. And now, you know, like when I cook for my, my, my team, I can make a healthy salad and like two or three people eat it, or I can make one of my mama's casseroles and everybody eats it. So it's also finding that balance. So do I start with a salad and add a casserole? <laughs> like, you know. Because why not? Right. What about you, Ellie? I feel like it's a mixture of what everybody's been saying. I feel like I, I'm being the last person I get to hear everybody else's saying, and I'm like, that's actually exactly what I'm thinking, but like combine it. Um, I think that like growing up, my mom was, my mom's Mexican and my dad's Irish. So growing up, my mom always made like tacos, quesadillas, and she was always making so much food. You could feed the neighbors and then the, uh, their neighbors because that's how my mom is. Mm -hmm. And the food was so good. And it's such a comfort when you're eating mom's cooking that like when I go to like Roberto's just to get my taco fix, it's just like, eh, it's a taco. Like I could have gone to Taco Bell for this. Like it's not a comfort anymore. And I think that's what really hits us is like sometimes some of the fast food places, it's like, yeah, it's great for a quick fix. But when we go out and we actually eat at restaurants, it's a comfort to us. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm making, I'm eating somebody's cooking. I'm, I'm, I'm actually eating cooked food that isn't just processed real quick. Yeah. And I believe that that's 
how we look at a lot of the food nowadays is like, you know, we go to the restaurant and instead of just getting the simple salad, we get the salad and then we get this and then we get two appetizers and then we share the dessert. And it's like, because we were so excited to try somebody else's cooking. And then yeah. we come home and the next day we make our own food that we are inspired because of the night before. And so now suddenly we're making a salad with some something else and something else and something else. And it's like, well, we add that to our list because when we go out we we spoil yeah when we come back we spoil and i feel like we're we're trying to compare to others i feel that's, like it's a subconscious thought that, that's really interesting now um and I, just just to let everybody know this isn't going to be a guilt trip about eating we're going to yeah, celebrate mm -hmm. eating in just a minute but i want to hit my last thing that i want to talk about on that there's two things that i think is kind of a why do we have this attachment one is guilt how many times growing up did you hear there's starving children in Africa? Finish yeah. your food. Yeah, that right like there. <laughs> All the time. And then I I'd rage. get in trouble for saying, send it to them. Um, yeah. I feel like everybody in this group, the <laughs> IHG group, is literally, no, just send it to them. It's fine. Here, you can give them my yeah. share. I feel like we all said that at one point. <laughs> so with that, I think the, 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 the guilt sticks with you because you're like, well, and you know, whether, whether you think it's a joke or not growing up, it sticks in the back of your head. Like, well, if I'm not eating this, what kind of jerk am I for taking food that someone else? And yes, There's we have a very wasteful views. society, yep. but we need to learn how to take less, I think would help. Um, the yeah. other thing, and is this the bacon phenomenon. Like I think it was 40 years ago, bacon, people would eat bacon for breakfast. And then the ad guys got a hold of it. And there's now there's bacon, everything. Mm -hmm. everything they put bacon, bacon on ice cream there is bacon is bacon. literally the worst part of the pig it's <laughs> all the fat hey it's bacon is the duct tape of all food recipes <laughs> <laughs> because we've been told that because we've been force fed that people didn't do that as much but now it's like it's almost a religion and that is so why do we have an emotional attachment because the ad guys said we have an emotional attachment it's true how high are the carcinogens in <laughs> and bacon it's terrible it, it's actually so true because another great example are mm. bananas so mm. bananas everybody you've got low potassium eat a banana bananas are the product of brilliant marketing you can get more potassium in like broccoli spinach salmon but everybody's like eat a banana which is really high in sugar so yeah. it's that it's that marketing that wraps itself around our brain and you get the little earworm and you're stuck well, like calcium with milk. No, that's not where you get the calcium from. You get it from green vegetables. Yep. Yeah. You know, my and that's, my mom juices, and she's, she's she's been a nutritionist for like thirty five years or something. So she's she's been taking classes. She updates her information. And my favorite thing with her is when people do juices nowadays, they're always told throw an apple in it. Well, the apple goes in to make it sweeter, to make it more palatable for you. It doesn't actually do anything and it doesn't process in your stomach the way the vegetables do. In fact, it actually makes it harder for you to process the vegetables that you're trying to juice, right? You're trying to get healthy from. But you so gotta have that taste. <laughs> but you have, but they want to have that taste. And so my mom always used to just joke this instead of apples, throw in a carrot. And my friend, they'd look at her and be like, yep. why? And she's like, a carrot is just as sweet. And it's not going to ruin the way your body is going to accept that. And she's like, if you want it to be more sweet, throw in a couple more carrots. She's like, you're, you're going to kill it if you keep throwing in apples because apples are a, a fruit and you're making a vegetable juice or a healthier juice or green juice and you're going to throw an apple in it and it's just going to completely kill everything you're trying to do. Very good. Mm. Okay, so now we're, we're getting off our soapbox. No more preaching <laughs> at you. Now let's enjoy being gluttons. Yep. <sighs> All right. We're, I, I have a game I want to play with y'all. We call this the Last Supper Club. Now, what would you create as your ultimate last meal or last day of food if there was no tomorrow, so there are no consequences? It freaking eat and enjoy. I'm going to do mine last because I'm, I'm going to gain five pounds by, re by reading it. So let's start with Ellie since we've been starting with you last. <laughs> what is on your last supper um, list? 
I'm, I'm going to assume that even though it's the last supper, I can take as long as I want to eat it because it's my last day anyway. There you go. And so starting off, my breakfast is going to be like amazing scrambled eggs with bacon and hash browns. And it's just going to be as big and obnoxious as it can be with orange juice. And then my dinner, I'm just going to skip lunch because why? I don't eat lunch right now. I'm going to have two meals. Dinner is <laughs> going to be uh, filet mignon with a lobster tail on the side. And I'm going to have, what else did I put on my list? Um, uh, two sushi rolls, just four little, you know. Uh, I want my dessert to be a mixture of honey toast, mochi, and some sort of like like uh, the, the caramelized popcorn stuff. Yeah. And then I just want to have snacks as I walk down the hallway to my desk. Just some like like Lay's or potato chips or I don't care what snacks. Fruit roll, just something as I'm walking down there to die. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and um, just so our listeners, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this and you're, you're near Facebook, let us know what you, what's on your Last Supper list. Yeah. I really want to hear. Okay, yeah. uh, Christina, <laughs> what is yours? I'm really intrigued uh, by Tyler's, but I'm holding off on that. It's going to let Lots you down, gator. Bud. Lots of gator. Lots of gator. <laughs> also in recipes if you have them when you post your last supper we are always looking for great recipes uh so mine is for i did like ellie i was like hey we got all day i went back and forth is this like everybody's last day or just my last day am i cooking for a whole group of people dub didn't give me details anyway um, figure it out. <laughs> so i started out with um Swedish pancakes with lingonberry sauce, fresh butter, whipped cream. Those are things that are just amazing. And, uh, but then I really thought I was going to go really extravagant and I was going to want, um, like steak lobster, like Ellie said, I, I went back to my comfort foods. Like I want my mom's poor boy casserole. I want my mom's, um, pineapple upside down cake, which is not a pineapple upside down cake, but it's what she called it. Uh, you know, I went back to those moments where if it's my last day, I want to, I want those memories. And yeah. so I connected those memories to, and, and, and because I didn't have to clean the kitchen, I was going to make all of it. I was going to make it all, eat it. And I didn't have to do any cleaning. And that would have been Sean's That's responsibility. Oh, uh, dead body, but God. hey, dead body, food. <laughs> clean, my, clean my food. <laughs> nice. Okay. Tyler, what about you, bud? All right. Well, I'm probably going to let you down, Dub. Sorry. Um, all right. So last day of eating. I'm going to protein it's not, powder and uh, yeah. a low cal <laughs> salad and no, no. I'm gonna work out in between. No, well, <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> but no, since it's uh, the last day of eating, it's going to be things that make me feel good that are also savory and decadent. And on my list, not probably what you think. In the morning, definitely going to be sitting there with a cup of Ethiopian fresh ground, fresh roasted coffee. Mm. Going to have avocado toast with some pico de gallo on it and three eggs over easy good to go that that's my favorite breakfast ever and it always will be uh and then for my main meal of the day because i'm gonna be doing all that working out and stuff for dub so uh it's gonna be sashimi with some sushi grade salmon chunks on it yeah i, I can never get over that and uh ribeye that's going to be grilled over wood, charcoal, and then to end it, some of my grandma's homemade fudge. Nice. That'd be it. That'd be it. I'm going out with all that. I'm going to end, end my day without gastral discomfort. Oh, and wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have all these memories. You know, it's going to be good. good. Yeah, well, with mine, I kind of went the opposite way, and whoever has to clean up my body has got to clean up a mess. <laughs> <laughs> This is like everything that I love, like truly, truly love. And can, you know, and you have, this is, you don't have to pace yourself. So I just put this in a 24 hour period. So take it as a waste. Um, my appetizer is, and this it's very simple, uh, slow cooked barbecue hot dogs. You cut up hot dogs, you put them in a crock pot for 12 hours and slow cook it with like stub sauce. The turkey hot dogs those are the best, Todd. And yeah, that, that, that's like my appetizer. And then, of course, I'd have to make some ribs because if, if you all know me, you know I love me some ribs. Right um, I'd have to. And make, you make some really good ribs. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. And I have to make, have a, I don't want the filet. I like New York's. I'm a weird like that. I want a New York steak. 
I want a 64 ounce Slurpee with 18 year old scotch, prime Italians. Um, Cause if, nice. hey, it's my last day, I can ruin the scotch. It's okay. Uh, fried potatoes. Cause we'll let it slide. <laughs> um, double fried That's chicken breast. Last day. No. Oh, I would be dead after this. <laughs> double, here's where it starts getting bad. Double fried chicken breasts. Um, oh. Butter fried eggs, like just in a vat of butter, then cook the fried eggs. Oh, delicious. Um, watermelon ice cream. That's dessert. Baby potatoes that have been marinated for three days in chicken broth before they're baked. And uh, ham round table pizza to finish it off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I went all over the board on mine, but I'm like, why yeah. does it matter? If you don't they- want to see the end coming. You want to be in a food <laughs> coma. That is, that, this is like uh, in the most literal sense. Thanksgivings <laughs> all put together. We'll, we'll be at Tyler's hey, memorial and being like, oh, he looks so good. We're going to be done and be like, that man is tore up. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you don't go out looking like you just went through hell, really, <laughs> did you do your job? Hey, you know, <laughs> and everybody's got their own ideal of paradise, you know? It's all good. <laughs> and, you know, and that, that to me would, I feel, hit almost all of my emotional <laughs> levels. Because I'm like, I don't want to feel like I'm missing out after at the end. I've yeah. done, mm. I've tried everything. So now let's move on to listener feedback. And now, let's see what all of our geek rock stars have to say. So for our listener feedback today, we asked, what is your favorite comfort food? And what is your emotional response to it? And why? And that is a mouthful. And guess what? I'm not going to read it. Christina, would you (laughs) like to read our listener feedbacks today? Absolutely. We got some really... One, One second. And those who didn't get it read, it's Christina's fault she picked. No more hate mail. No more hate mail. Wow. <laughs> what? Um, I lost my bus. voice, Dub. I lost oh. my voice. Dub's going to have to read. All righty. So the first one is Jill Cathcart. She said, after every time I've gotten better from being sick, all I want is an egg and cheese burrito from a fast food place by us. I have no idea why I picked this. My as my post sick food of choice. It's like my reward for surviving. I like that. Reward yourself. You made it through. Uh, Right? Uh, Crystal Midget says, I have a special spot in my tummy for mole and Spanish rice. It's one of my favorite Mexican comfort foods. And one that one of the few that my husband and kids don't enjoy. So I don't have to share. This is why I like to do that. There, this is why I like blue cheese. My husband hates blue cheese. Um, I make it almost every month, and it's like a warm blanket that soothes my PMS like nothing else. Sister, I got you. <laughs> got oh, you. Love it. <laughs> um, so which is really, really funny when we get to my top five. Um oh. <laughs> and then TC Harvey, the voice of iHeart Geek, says baby carrots. They're just so amazingly helpless and yummy, and they crunch when you chew them. <laughs> that is so dark. And then he says, and now I freaked myself out. And us too a little, Todd. <laughs> helpless. That's outstanding. Oh. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> now, before we go on to the main event, I want to ask you, since you've gotten through this much of the show, if we haven't earned your subscription yet, you probably shouldn't be listening to it. If we have earned your subscription, please hit the subscribe button. Um, go to the website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the com. We paid extra for it. Buy a shirt from the shop. Um, we Yes, they're awesome. And let's see, what else do we got? We got our Patreon, which we have new episodes going up on every week. And uh, I know I'm missing something. Go, go to our Facebook group. You should go be in our Facebook group because it's fun. Go to our Twitter, Instagram. Discord. Discord. Do we have anything else I'm missing? I think that's all of them. That I shirt you're wearing there. Yes. <laughs> we have a lot of designs, and I recommend checking them out. And hopefully there'll be some more coming very, very soon. And with that, let's move on to the main event. Now it's time for the main event. Okay, so for today's version of the main event, we did our top five 
foods, meals that we have an emotional attachment to. And I'm, I'm hoping for the stories because that's kind of the point mm-hmm. of doing this on the top five list. So I'm going to start with mine. And my number five of all things is Top Ramen. Um, that, has, that is a very weird emotional attachment to me because I've been eating Top Ramen. That's the first thing I ever learned how to cook. Um, I've tried it every way possible. I've fried it. I've done it with Parmesan. I've done it with no, no, no sauce, lots of sauce. I went all over the board. Microwave ramen? I've done it. That's terrible. Um, oh, that's bad. But there's something about top ramen that no matter what, if I'm hungry, I just feel okay if I'm eating. I'm like, you know, it's got horrible nutritional value, but it just, it feels like, okay, everything's going to be okay. And I, after a bad day, I, I defy you to not eat top ramen. Well, for me anyway, and not feel like, okay, just another day. We got over it because it reminds me there's 10 million other bad days that I made it through when I eat top ramen. This one's no different. So that that's top ramen's a big one. And if you got it, roast beef is the best flavor. Mm. Let's go to Pixie. What is your number five? My number five is actually something that's a little bit shocking for some people. I <gasps> have something that is sweet. So what I put in there was generic candies because I figured that's a great way to go. Now, when I grew up, my mom's nutritionist, I mentioned this, I wasn't allowed to have sweets. And so when I went to school, my mom used to make me this really fat sandwich and we used to call it a cartoon sandwich. She would like stack the meat, the lettuce and everything. And this thing was like this big, it's huge. And I was able to trade a quarter of my sandwich for somebody's entire peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> or I would give a quarter and they would give me all of their snacks for the month. Like I was able to do some really strange deals with my sandwich because people loved my mom's sandwich and I love candy. So things for <laughs> me like fruit by the foot and gushers and all uh, those things. I Winnie. will do anything for those. In fact, I have some right now I bought yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so bad 90s candy is what you're saying. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm a sucker it. for good sweets. Hey, Dave. Right? I, just... yeah. When everything was extreme. Like, yeah. Uh, Christina, what about you? What is your number five? So my number five, this is going to be funny, is also top ramen, but not cooked. Oh, I know. I've done that. So like... In, when I was in college, my quick meal was I would go to McDonald's, I would buy McNuggets and the sweet and sour sauce. I would crush up the ramen, mix it with the sweet and sour, slice up the nuggets. And that was my my ghetto girl oriental chicken salad. Um, my husband crushes it up and he puts it in his, his breakfast mashes with like uh, potatoes, eggs, and it just adds that little bit of crunch and he uses the beef seasoning mm-hmm. um, throughout. So yeah, I, that's, uh, that's my, my emotional marriage attachment is because those were things that we did when we first got married, thinking outside of the box. And I didn't like the noodles when I was younger. I do now, but yeah. That's it. Tyler, what is your number five? My number five is grandma's homemade fudge that I mentioned previously. Um, may she rest in peace. She made the best homemade fudge I've ever had in my life. We used to um, see them maybe twice a year, once annually at the Christmas uh, Christmas family reunion. And as soon as I got through the door, I beelining for the kitchen because I knew somewhere on that counter there was a tray of homemade fudge and with I, or without nuts uh hers she would actually make it a bunch of different ways my favorite one was the one without nuts but she would make white chocolate fudge just regular old fudge i mean things with stuff strewn through it nuts you know i heart key christmas and, party here we come right and it's just it's one of those memories of uh running around my grandma's you know condo and everything and just one of the best times in my childhood you know that that fudge it was always front and center that sounds great Oh, yeah. Okay. My number four is red velvet cake. Now, oh. growing up, this is one of those traditions we had every year on Christmas. My mom would make a happy birthday Jesus cake that was red velvet. And it's the only time all year we would, we would ever have it. I think that people that eat red velvet cake on just a normal occasion, that's sacrilege. It's only on Christmas time, but it just, it feels like home. You know, my mom hasn't done it in a few years, and it doesn't feel as good without that piece. 
And it's not the, Mom, are you that listening? I love the taste. Isn't she doesn't listen? <laughs> 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 but it's not that I even love the taste of it that much because it's okay. But it's just that that is a pure emotional attachment to that, mm -hmm. which has just been fantastic. What is your number four, Pixie? Uh, so mine comes with a small, small nostalgia story, but it's actually garlic bread or garlic toast. Um, my dad, you know, growing up, it would, they would always cook. My parents always cooked. It was always a trade-off because my dad would make like home-cooked Italian or home-cooked like hearty meals. And my mom would be like, here, we make a salad. And I make the tacos. And it's like, Ugh. So they were so opposite that one day my dad went, you know what's good with everything? Garlic bread. And he showed me how to make garlic bread before he showed me how to like boil water. And my mom even showed me how to make garlic bread before she showed me how to boil water. And it's funny because it was like the only kind of constant in our house that fit with every meal we had. It didn't matter if we were eating Mexican, Italian, you know, Thai food, whatever. We had 100% every time garlic bread, just in case. And so that was the first thing I learned how to eat and make and everything. And I loved it. And it was my favorite and my go-to. Very good. Christina? No, I want garlic bread. Uh, <laughs> you can take um, the place of a pencil, too. Ice cream bread is, okay. is mine. It's, it's really easy to make. It's amazingly delicious. Um, super popular in my house. And it's just, you take your favorite ice cream and you take self-rising flour and you mix them together and it makes bread. Because everything that's in the ice cream, like the eggs and the, oh. is in, and, you know, we use like Marionberry, add a little bit of Marionberry, uh, Marionberry's in there for freshness. And it's actually a lighter bread, just has a hint of sweetness and it's delicious and amazing. Are you going to make, make me some next time cream? you come to Vegas? I am going to make some. It's on my list of things that I need to bring. Do you make your own ice cream with it? Sometimes ice cream. That's Sometimes. snooty right there. Come on, that's now. overachieving. <laughs> that is overachiever. I, I either make my own you, you know, or I use Tillamook. <laughs> I do. Oh, I, I am a little bit. I use Tillamook ice cream. So very good. I like. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of McCall's ice cream. That's like the bomb. That's a local one from Reading. But oh, <laughs> love McCall's. Yeah. I don't know why. But Tyler, what about you? What's your number four? Uh, again, this one comes, a uh, majority of them come from my childhood, but uh, Freezy Pops, the old classic Ooh. freezer oh, treat I that would some. just cut the crap out of the sides of your mouth. Right there. Ah. Running around the neighborhood with Freezy Pops. And my, my, uh, as a kid, you know, my best friend, Don't. Philip, <laughs> you know, we used, we used to just raid his freezer all the time. My parents would never buy him, and I was always very upset about that. But his dad had a box of them. And Man, you got to get to that magic there. point where it's just melted enough that you can crush uh -huh. it, but not so melted that it's all liquid. Right. Because that, that burns, it burns if you drink the liquid. Yep, yep. I have yep. 22 boxes in my freezer right now, Tyler. Wow. I, well, wow. I, have, an, I have an event. I don't have a problem. Okay. I have an event. <laughs> yeah, we were both Tyler, Tyler, looked, addicted to these things. Tyler looked genuinely disappointed when you said that. Really? So, um. Are we going to talk after this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rem reminds I have a it's guest room. Sugar water. <laughs> no, we were borderline addicted to those things when I was a kid. It was awesome. Summers, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So my number three is um, Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup and 7-Up. The If my mom, at, when I was sick and my mom believed I was sick, that's what was coming to my room or the couch yeah. or whatever. And it just... At that moment, you knew that you're going to feel better. And, you know, your mom's, my mom was just there for me at that moment. And that's, as an emotional attachment, how much better can you get than that? You know? Right. I want to know what you got when she didn't believe you were sick. <laughs> she didn't make me crap if she didn't believe it. <laughs> if I wasn't oh, staying home from funny. school and I was pretending to be sick, you know, no, you can, you can take care of yourself. <laughs> but if she, if when she knew I was sick, you know, I'd have the flu. Care, yeah. It's just one of those just really nice feelings, like love you, mommy, you know, type things. Oh. Aw. Pixie. I wish my mom did that. My dad always did that. But anyway, sorry. My third is actually tacos. Um, as I've mentioned, my mom is Mexican. And my mom actually will take a like corn tortilla and like fry it up to make a taco shell. 
mm-hmm. and then she'll make all the fixings with it and so we come home and my sister will literally be like you're making tacos tonight crap I'll put the girls in the car we'll be there in 20 minutes and like I, I like she will drive, drive across town for it and I love it because you know my mom will put everything together and it's kind of a make your own you put as much in she'll start to make them but then at one point she just goes just make your own there's plenty there and it works too because even when I was hanging out with my friends every third Wednesday or every Wednesday we would try to hang out and go for taco Wednesday at Roberto's because they don't do taco Tuesday but anytime I get a nice crunchy taco man it just some some nostalgia from growing up eating tacos and all that stuff like even if it's a cheapo taco bell what it still reminds me of my mom a little bit even though it's not as good it reminds me of that nice like comfort that my mom will always make me food whenever I need it nice Christina mine is also attached to my mom it's uh called poor boy casserole it's what she would make when she was feeding large groups of people super simple it's egg noodles, ground beef, cream, uh, can of corn and cream of mushroom soup. Mix it all together. And you she would add more as more people were coming. Put cheese on the top and bake the heck out of it. And for whatever reason, my friends would come over when specifically when my mom was making this. And it is literally the easiest dinner to make, but there's just something special about it. It was, I think it was the way she made it and how like she was just hilarious with it. It's but the love. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the love. Um, but yeah, no, my friends, I had a friend call me about a, eh, six months ago. How do I make poor boy casserole? How do I make? And, and since then I've played with it and added things and then seafood versions and stuff, but always go back to that, that, that simple, simple casserole, which I tell myself because there's only five ingredients can't be unhealthy, right? Liar! <laughs> <laughs> Thousand calorie plate. <laughs> Tyler, uh, my number three is chicken and dumpling. Ooh. That's that's something from my new family. Um, when I got married, I had never had chicken and dumplings before, and my wife <laughs> looked at me like I had five heads when I told her that. And <laughs> it was almost every other family gathering. Somebody was rolling out uh, oh flour and everything on the big table cutting it, Ooh. boiling it, you know, boiling chicken and tearing it all apart, putting all the vegetables in, everything from like scratch. My dad. <laughs> and there's just something about the whole family being around, waiting for that pot to be done because you don't want them too chewy, but you can't have them falling apart either. So everybody had their preference. And then, of course, you know, the brother-in-law's over there digging in there, hey, 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 you know, and it's it's just, it's a good experience. And it always, it always uh, brings up the worms and fuzzies, you know. Nice. Oh, there's so many I want to add right now, but um, <laughs> my number two. Oh, this actually hurts because I'm actually taking things out right now so I can make sure that it's in. And that's barbecue in general. Um, if if you if you're friends with me, you know I barbecue. Mm. That's how you I want to be friends with him. <laughs> that's mm. how I show love. If you know, if you if you're over my house, we're barbecuing. I like you. Um, it's one of those things, and it's. It's that's that's something I got from my dad. Whenever we'd have big groups of people over, we'd barbecue and you know, and the great thing about barbecuing is and it's the cooking. And that is if you're in the back and you're cooking, the people that come out, those are usually your closest friends. The the, the people that stay inside and watch TV, they're like, they're your friends, but there's something special about the guys that they come out, hang out with you while you're cooking. And that's the go hang out with your wife. <laughs> but that's the emotional attachment to barbecue for me. Uh where are we? Yeah, Pixie, number two. Two, two. Uh, my second favorite is actually sushi. Um, where does it sound? My first experience with sushi was with a bunch of my friends, and two of them happen to be Japanese. And it's funny because since then, I now just will eat sushi with my friends all the time. It's kind of like a monthly ritual for us, so we make sure we hang out. But different friends. My first mm-hmm. friend, she was like, "I'm gonna order food. You're gonna eat it. And you're not gonna ask me what it is." And I was like okay and I remember feeling really terrified and she's like you're gonna like it you're gonna like it she just kept putting things on my plate and I was kind of like okay and I was eating it it was really good and she told me she's like if you want soy sauce then you can do it but I'm just gonna tell you to eat it first and then if you want to add soy sauce do that on your second bite and it was just a, just a crazy good experience and I was very happy I had her because we ended up eating up the most sushi that day and we had two like 
big strong muscly guys with us and they were like oh man I can't after their third roll they're like I can't eat any more sushi and she and I are like can we get a couple more sashimis and some rolls <laughs> so you're expensive too I got you Oh no, we yeah, it's so easy. No, no, no. So good. All you can eat. Don't don't get no no no. No, no. We weren't paying per roll. <laughs> nice. But it was worth it. It really was. Outstanding. Christina. So my grandma is from Little Mina, Arkansas. So mine is chitlins and hush puppies. You can keep the gravy. I'm not a gravy person, but my grandma would deep fry both. And she'd put them on my plate and they'd be gone like that as a kid. Um, funny thing is I'm married to a country boy. He thinks chitlins are really disgusting. <laughs> so that's, that's my very city girl uh, country food. But my, my grandma could buy them. And again, my mom was the second oldest to 13. So we come from big families. I only have three kids. Uh, <laughs> but um she would buy them knowing I was coming because she could just make them. And then she would use the leftover dough from making the chitlings. That's what she make the hush puppies with. So it was like double bonus. And it's just that memory of my grandma knowing, you know, my mom would call and she'd tell my grandpa, I got to go to the store. I got to get gizzards. Christina wants chitlins. So nice. Tyler. Um, number four is going to be turkey soup mom's homemade turkey soup after every thanksgiving, thanksgiving. growing yes. up yes yep my mom would make it and now they live in tennessee i live in florida and so of course oh tyler's on his way up i'm gonna put on some turkey soup and Ooh. you know you, you can't anything that mom makes that just brings up them nostalgic feels you can't have that off the list so mm. definitely gonna be mom's turkey soup very good Okay, so my number one is a particular restaurant. Um, it was in Reading called Shaka's. They, it doesn't exist anymore because the owners kept dealing drugs out of the back, so it went out of business like three times. It was it's it's a Mongolian grill. It. It's a Mongolian yep. grill with you know you put the noodles, meat, vegetables, then they cook it in front of you type thing. Everybody's seen them. This one was special. I haven't liked any as much. It's like the exact exact thickness of the noodles and everything else. Yeah, they put crack in it. You I were addicted. Yes. <laughs> but, I, but I'll tell you what was funny about this. Now, in high school, I refused to ever take a girl on a date there because I knew that every every person I dated would end in a breakup. But some, you know, all, all relationships ended, ended in heartbreak. So I refused to take Ouch. anybody there. I refused I to take look. anybody there because you I didn't, didn't want to ever have anything to ruin my Shaka's mm -hmm. experience. Yep. That's how much I love that restaurant. It was fantastic. Yep. So yeah. Pixie? I knew you were going that route. <laughs> um, mine is actually, my mom makes it every year for my birthday and it's called Pozole. And it's a Mexican like <sighs> soup and I could tell she didn't oh, know God. exactly what it is. <laughs> and I, I, I cannot she makes it every year for my birthday and ori originally she made it when I was six and I requested it every year on my birthday when I was like five and she was like okay and she still does and she does not realize how how amazing this is to me and even funnier story was one day she told me she's actually on the can and I don't remember what it's called but the little tiny like soft nougaty things in there she's on the can of it she was the model the original model wow. for the can. Oh, that's so cool. She was, yeah, she was right. like born and raised in California and Mexico and everything, and her whole family is Hispanic. And it was can so funny. Can you put a she, picture of that up on this on this yes! show? I can try and find it. I would it. love to I see that. I have to find the can. She gets this can from our family in Mexico. So I don't know if they actually sell it in the States, but it's still worth it, and I love it, and I will see if I can find the picture. You're like, Ma, I need a picture. <laughs> Oh no, she'll send me a picture. She'll she'll be like, yeah, this is me. Like she has a picture when she was working on uh, one of Weird Al Yankovic's films. She was just walking by, and they were like, hey, you're really pretty. Can we do something with you? And she had a, she did what was it? I forgot which one now. But there was a big lion and everything. And she's got pictures of it. And I'm like, the heck, you just have pictures of this? She's like, I live in California. <laughs> wow, wow, I love it. Very good, Christina. Your number so, one. Do we get an honorable mention? Yes. Yes, maybe. I yeah, have two. I have, oh, like, I'm, time, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll throw an honorable mention in if you really need one. 
Okay, I really need one. Um, so mine, Crystal, you're going to love this. Mine is from when I was 13. And Auntie Flo came to visit. And my mom made a big deal about it. And she bought me an Uno bar. She said it was ladies' huh? chocolate. And that you needed it. And, um, and it's like a... She has it on her desk right now. We all know. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Lightly. Specifically for this show, Dub. But no, it is amazing. It's like a truffle type chocolate with like an amazing like slight hint of saltiness. And it is, it is definitely when I'm having a bad day, doesn't have anything to do with any, any, any auntie flow anymore, but when I'm having a bad day, I'm just like, I just want a little piece of it. You put it in the freezer. Like it's, it's my little comfort. Very good. Yep. Tyler. Number one, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. So because of childhood and whatnot, see, I grew up in a seafood family. My parents were divers. Jimmy Buffett was on all the time. Margaritas were flowing. They were always on dive trips. My dad owned a seafood shop growing up. Hmm. My grandfather, he uh, owned the plants where they brought um, shrimp in down by the beach and stuff. Um, so a giant bowl of steamed shrimp and some garlic butter. Mm -hmm. That on the table, I knew it was going to be a good night. We would sit there and eat peel and eat shrimp for two hours as a family. And it was just something about that time. You know, my dad showed me the efficient way to un undo the shrimp and everything, you know, and just, you know, being there as a family, it was such a, such a good memory, you know, and hanging around the seafood shop and stuff. And I'd always see him bag up a big thing of shrimp and I knew it was coming home. It was going to be a good night. Mm. Oh, nice. Mm. Okay. So we're going to quickly throw honorable mentions. We have like 10 seconds, but I'll throw mine out any rainy day. Beef stew, because that's something my mom did. Yeah. Loved it. Do you have one, Pixie? Uh, beef broth. Anytime I was sick, my dad would throw on a little cup of beef broth. Uh, Tyler, what about you? Do you have what? Do you have a, an honorable mention? An honorable mention would definitely be right there with uh, sushi. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, Christina. <sighs> well, this is recently introduced to me. My uh, one of my assistants is uh, a Filipino, and she introduced me to lumpia which is amazing. Like it's very quickly becoming my favorite. I was not feeling well one day. She sent her husband over with like a little baggie of lumpia, like just fry them up when you want them. Dear God, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. And that is a show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, go to our website, do all the things we've mentioned it before. Thank you all for listening. We appreciate it a lot. And until next time, I'm Dub. I'm here with Pixie. I'm here with Tyler. I'm here with Christina. Keep on geeking on, kids. You have been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.